Well, there was a product launched about a year and a half ago. It was uh, in the financial crypto niche, and it was the biggest online launch at the time in history, doing $25 million. Uh, I ended up doing, uh, for myself, the first day, I did $135,000 in commissions for myself. Uh, that entire week, I did commissions of uh, $250,000 for myself, and I placed using nothing but SEO. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back to another episode of The Fighting Entrepreneur. This is your host, Onyx Singal, the fighting entrepreneur. I think I said that enough times now. Listen, we've got an amazing guest and an amazing topic today. We're going to talk about how to get millions of visitors using SEO. Now, some of you probably heard that and thought, yay. The other, <coughs> other portion of you thought, ah, SEO. You know, SEO is dead. SEO is so 20 years ago. Well, we're going to find out because I got to tell you, I started my journey as an internet marketer and as an entrepreneur as an SEO guy, but I used to do all black hat SEO. It was easy and you get bursts of traffic. It was great, right? And now I've moved away from it because it seems like a lot of hard work. So I found the one person who I trust the most to talk about this, to come onto this podcast and to, to, to share with you his amazing knowledge. Now I go way back in history with this person, okay? He has been a big, big part of our learn <laughs> nation. He, you know, started off as one of our coaches. He used to help students every day at Learn Nation, but then he got so successful, we could no longer afford him. So he's gone off to build his own <laughs> business, and it's just been absolutely amazing. He is by far one of the foremost experts when it comes to search engine optimization. Um, you know, I, I think his fees are ridiculous, but hey, I would suggest highly at the end of this when he tells you how to get a hold of him to do that. So today we're going to talk about this. I see it every day, every single other day. This guy brags and boasts on his Facebook about, oh, I just posted this new article and I'm making an extra 500 bucks a day or a month. And I'm like, man, everything he posts just gets ranked. How? And that is the selfish motive of this podcast this time is I want to figure out because my blog and my SEO suck. I'm putting it out there right now, and without further ado, uh, well, one thing I do have to say before I introduce this amazing person, and that is onicpodcast.com. Get over there if you want show notes. Let me tell you something. If you're watching on the video, <laughs> I got questions. I got a lot of questions, okay? You can hear it if you're listening to the audio. That's, that's paper. Lots of questions. I don't know how long we're going to go, but it's going to be a lot of knowledge dropped, which means you need to be prepared to go to onicpodcast.com and get all the show notes and listen to it again and again and again and again to capture all this information. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to introduce this awesome guest, one of my good friends, marketing genius. Welcome him to the Fighting Entrepreneur with a big round of applause, Mr. Jeff Lenny. Thank you for being with us today. Awesome, 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 Onik. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pumped about this. Uh, let's do it, man. Let's uh, rock and roll. All right. Well, listen, man. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to hear all. So what we're going to do with kind of Jeff's background and his story is we'll, we'll mesh it into the questions because you do got to hear about him, right? Because you're talking about a true like he was not an internet marketer. He was not. And then all of a sudden he just took on SEO and now he's just, he's just kicking butt. So uh, Jeff, you know what, man? If you're ready, I want to jump right into round number one, rapid fire. Oh, whoop. no, 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 no. I made this mistake again. <laughs> Jeff, I need you to raise your right hand, please. I need you to raise your right hand, and I need you to repeat after me. I, Jeff Lenny. I, Jeff Lenny. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And to reveal all of Google's innermost secrets. <laughs> and to reveal all of Google's most innermost secrets. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much. That is the oath of a fighting entrepreneur. You have now done it. You cannot lie anymore. And Google, you are in trouble. All right. With that said, let's ro let's just go, man. Let's go into round number one, and it's going to be yeah. a rapid fire in the beginning. Yeah. For a third one. <laughs> Jeff, number one, what the heck makes you an SEO expert? Uh, well, you know, you called me one, so I think that's like if other people <laughs> call me one, I don't really have to. Uh, I think the fact that I'm known as one by you and by other people kind of says enough about my reputation. Um, <laughs> 
that's good me, is man. that your is that your number one way of getting traffic to your business uh, yes. all NGO right that's probably 90 percent of what i do awesome awesome uh what would you say is the toughest niche to rank <clears throat> content in uh the toughest niche uh there's many 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 uh, met, uh I, I, I can't pronounce this mesothelioma mesothelioma the, uh, yeah ridiculously tough uh life insurance mortgage broker anything in the financial niche uh, drug rehab is probably the toughest because PPC is not allowed anymore. So everyone's going full on organic. Uh, so I, I would say, you know, drug rehab is probably the toughest, um, but those other ones as well though. Uh, then of course you get the Viagra, pornography, uh, things like that where it's also ridiculously <laughs> tough. Maybe I should have asked what niches are not tough to rank in. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> Hey, with your knowledge, we'll be able to kick everyone's butt in those niches. So, um, let's see. Um, you know what? Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, Jeff. That's not a rapid fire question. Screw the rapid fire now. I want to learn a little bit about you because I know about you, right? We go way back. You started with me and would learn so long ago, but what got you into SEO? Most people are running away from SEO right now, and you seem to keep running into it. Why? It works. Uh, you know, I got into inter internet marketing. I was doing IT back in the day 10 years ago or so. And I was trying to find ways to make extra money online. I tried eBay. This is true. I tried eBay stuff. I was making like a thousand bucks a month on eBay, which was awesome back in the day, but it took me like seven hours a day to do that. And then I discovered this little site called ClickBank, or it's one of the affiliate networks. And I started learning about, uh, back in the day, SEO was kind of that thing. So I assumed that everyone who made money online did SEO. So that's what I have to do. I didn't know there was so much more to it though. So yeah, it was just kind of a long journey from there. I just slowly kind of got into SEO and the blogging. I tried everything a lot of times and failed more times than I could count. Really, my problem was I didn't really focus on one particular thing. I jumped around a lot, but I slowly got better at SEO over the years and uh, just kind of realized I was pretty damn good at doing it. I uh, did SEO for a friend's local business probably eight years ago. And I was like, okay, I should rent this guy for this stuff. I'm, I'm legit. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you monetize SEO? Like right now in your life, I know there's tons of ways to monetize it, but how do you monetize SEO? Uh, I like to do a few things. I like to rank for product names in different niches. For example, I'll rank for product names, people that are searching for 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 times a month, and I will write a solid review. I mean, amazing, amazing stuff. I put a few thousand words into it, a lot of time into it, and I will simply tell people why this is a good or a bad product. And the thing is about me, what I've always done is I've always been honest since I first started you know, nine or 10 years ago. I've never lied to sell a, sh a crappy product. I've never lied to people to get their money. I've always been honest about things. And even if you Google my name, you're going to find there's really no one hating on me. Uh, mm -hmm. At least not in the first three or four pages. No. I got rid of them. I'm kidding. But uh, no, I I've always been honest about what I've done. What's, yeah. your, what's your greatest monetary success like you, so, so by the way, it sounds to me like your biggest monetization for SEO is affiliate marketing, basically, uh, yes. right? Okay. Um, so give me, give me a number. Like what's your greatest success? We're we talking one day or one week. I got both. Give me both. Uh, I did a, in commissions for myself. Well, there was a product launched about a year and a half ago. It was uh, in the financial crypto niche and it was the biggest online launch at the time in history doing $25 million in sales total. You know the guy who that was for. Uh, I ended up doing, uh, for myself, the first day, I did $135,000 in commissions for myself. Uh, that entire week, I did commissions of uh, $250,000 for myself, and I placed eighth in the contest using nothing but SEO. And this is cool. The thing is, the person that I did this for hired me to do uh, SEO analysis for their sites for a nice five-figure sum. And that led me into being really well known in that industry and taking on eight and nine figure clients doing SEO for them as well. So while affiliates kind of still my thing, uh, I'm certainly not going to turn down a high dollar client that knows what they want and will trust me to get it done for them. So 135,000 in one day, quarter million in one week. Uh, you know, I don't know if I ever beat that or not, but I'm, I'm sure going to try. <laughs> that's amazing. All right, listen. Tell me, get, get, okay, that's out there. Like that's crazy. That blows my mind. Jo blows Joe, my Joe mind almost, yeah. Joe almost passed out here while recording. <laughs> um, but what? What? Okay, give me the middle. Not, not like a, you know, not like a bad one. Not a super crazy one. Like, give me a middle. Like a good day and a good week. Jeez. Um, good day. I mean, a while ago, I was doing um, stuff in the credit return niche, and there was about a week where I did two or three thousand dollars a day for about five days straight. Uh, 
I mean, the thing is with SEO, I mean, obviously to, to monetize it the way I monetize it, it depends on traffic, search engine traffic coming to my sites uh, for those particular product reviews. So I mean, I, some weeks, some days I might do 50 bucks, other days I might do 500 bucks or even 5,000 bucks. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I also like to focus more now on building my email list as well. Um, so I can drive traffic back to my site, back to different products as well. Um, so there's a whole much more to it besides the SEL, but SEO is kind of my main means of driving mm -hmm. traffic to my sites, to my funnels, et cetera. And, and to build your email list, you're using <laughs> SEO. It's not like you're out there doing Facebook ads yeah. and Google ads and right. all that, it's just SEO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, your I'm, SEO is mostly built around your blog, correctly? Is that correct? Uh, well, my, my, well, my main site, jeffplenny.com, is, of course, where you're going to find my marketing and stuff. But I do own probably 20, 30 other websites in different niches where I monetize those as well, rank for different products, different things, et cetera. But yeah, pure organic traffic. Wow, that's amazing. 20 or 20 plus sites. That's sounds like you know what you're doing, is what it sounds like. I, I like to think so. <laughs> All right. Um, Hey, so I, I just have, you know, we're going to skip one of our rounds because I just have one question. I'm just going to ask it yeah. in this round. I don't even know what round I'm in anymore. This was supposed to be rapid fire, but whatever. Uh, uh -huh. um, how, why is it that when I hear the three letters SEO, I want to jump off of a bridge? How has it changed in the last 10, 15 years? Like, why, why is that? Please, first of all, don't jump on it. You've got a lot to live for. A lot of people <laughs> love you. <laughs> a lot of people love you, man. I do too. Uh, you know, honestly, to me, SEO has gotten easier in the past 10 years. I mean, when I first got started back in the day, uh, on-page optimization, you had to include your keyword, you, know, you wanted a keyword density of three to 5%. Meaning you're including your keyword three to five times every 100 words. So the content ranked, but it just read and sounded like crap. It was, it was, it worked, but it was, it was pretty, pretty blah. And now it's more about just writing good quality content. You can have a more, more of a copywriting flow to it, as long as you include your keywords properly. So I think SEO has gotten easier and the thing is, people like you, people are scared of it sometimes, so they don't turn to it because it takes work, it takes time to learn. You know, you're not going to get an instant gratification like on your Facebook ads or PPC, where you can, you know, push a button and get 10,000 hits in a day for 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 a grand or whatever. Um, so it takes time, um, but I, I've stuck with it because it works, and I've got people paying me a lot to do it for them because it works, and I get results as well. Did you guys hear that, by the way? I, I blanked out. I'm sorry, Jeff, after you said a oh, yeah. certain word. I just blanked out. <laughs> and Joe's, Joe's here laughing. You said copywriting. Come on. It, it, we are running on a 100% success rate right now. Every single guest we have. I don't even, I don't, you see it, right? Come on, entrepreneurs. I don't ask. It's not like <laughs> I, pro hey, Jeff, did I ask you before we started the interview? Like, hey, make sure you say the word copywriting at some point. No, not at all. No, right? Exactly. I didn't. So this is genuinely coming from the entrepreneurs. They understand the value of copywriting. Anyways, awesome. So you say it's gotten easier. This is cool. Well, we are gonna just so you know, throughout this podcast, we're gonna we're gonna we're about to jump into the tactical, right? The how to do it, what needs to be on a page, what needs to be off a page. How do you SEO now? Because you are the first person, my friend, that has said it's gotten easier. I've been working under the automatic assumption that uh, it's. Uh, that it's gotten really hard. Now, here, here's a very honest question for you, and then we're going to move into round number two, which is SEO metrics. But um, is it too late? I mean, when I asked you this question, you rattled off so many niches, right? That are like, oh, that's really hard. That's really hard. That's really hard. So now I'm listening. I'm a new, you know, if, some, if I'm someone new, like, is it too late? Am I too late to the game to have a chance at SEO? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, those are also client niches. I mean, methods, I can't say the word, methodemia lawyers, life insurance, or brokers, financial, that's more high level client stuff. You know, you might have people paying you 10 or 15,000 a month or more to run the SEO for those sites. But for affiliate stuff, I mean, even for client stuff, no, it's never too late. No, uh, SEO, I mean, I, there's, yeah, it's never too so late. You, so you know people that you've taught or just people that are just starting in recent times that are able to take a site and start getting traffic to it from SEO? I mean, not immediately, but yeah, I, I yeah. Build, I'm building two new sites for myself right now this week okay. uh, for myself. Awesome. So. All right. Well, great. Well, we're about to move into how long does SEO take in the next section. So let's move into round number two, SEO metrics. Like, oh, that's really hard. That's really hard. That's really hard. So now I'm listening. I'm a new, you know, if, some, if I'm someone new, like, is it too late? Am I too late to the game to have a chance at SEO? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, those are also client niches. I mean, methods, I can't say the word, methodemia lawyers, life insurance, or brokers, financial, that's more high level client stuff. You know, you might have people paying you 10 or 15,000 a month or more to run the SEO for those sites. But for affiliate stuff, I mean, even for client stuff, no, it's never too late. No, uh, 
uh, SEO. I mean, I, I mean, there's, yeah, it's never true. So you, so you know people that you've taught or just people that are just starting in recent times that are able to take a site and start getting traffic to it from SEO? I mean, not immediately, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I build, I'm building two new sites for myself right now this week okay. uh, for myself. Awesome. So. All right. Well, great. Well, we're about to move into how long does SEO take in the next section. So let's move into round number two, SEO metrics. How long does it take to see results from SEO on a brand new site? So walk me through this new site that you're launching. Kind of give me like, what are your expectations as you do this? What are you looking at timeline wise? Um, brand new site. You're going to be in uh, kind of a Google um, sandbox, uh, really. Basically, you're not going to really rank for anything big for a couple of months. There's a lot of SEOs launching um, spammy websites like like crazy, and they want to try ranking and dominating the engines or black hat stuff. So you're not going to really see results for a couple of months. Uh, so don't let that discourage you. But yeah, it's going to take between one and three months to kind of get out of that sandbox. Uh, there are a few ways you can get around it, though, and I probably shouldn't even show this. I'm not even making this up. We're sharing the private group I'm in, but if you have a verified YouTube channel, YouTube, of course, is owned by Google. And please, guys, everyone listening, don't share this. I really shouldn't have said anything. But if you have a verified YouTube channel linking to your website, that kind of helps you get out of that sound trap a lot quicker because it's Google verifying Google, so that kind of helps it. But usually a few months. I don't. If I build a brand new site... <laughs> I don't really expect anything from these between three to six months. So again, it takes time, which I think is also why it's not sexy. You, know, you can't just simply go build a site and push a button and send traffic to it with SEO. It's not sexy, um, but it works for the long term. So that's it. Man, that, yeah, you're <laughs> right. That does make it a lot less sexy. And so let's talk about, first of all, I got to tell everybody. All right, uh, verify the YouTube channel linking. That's a, I don't understand. You know, sometimes I wonder if people really pick up on these things. That's quite the advanced Jedi strategy or hint given. So if that channel <coughs> links to your website, you can get out of the sandbox quicker. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to ask you that I kind of want to ask you because you said you have 20 plus sites and um, we're going to get back into the metrics and how long it takes and all of that. But uh, how much traffic do you get right now per month across your whole network? Jeez, across, you know, it's, believe it or not, it's not in millions or anything. I mean, per month, geez, overall, probably a quarter million, yeah, quarter million unique visitors per month. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's a lot of it, but it's across different niches. So some sites might only get 50 visits per day, some might get 500 per day. Um, so it varies. That, but your visits. But your visits are so targeted, right? Because you said you're getting people that are like from product names. Like these are buyer people. Yeah. Like you're getting very <clears throat> targeted visitors. Okay, so let's talk about a site that's not brand new. And this is where I get selfish. Let's talk about Learn, right? We, we um, a couple of team members and I, uh, we started trying to SEO Learn a couple of months ago. But I got to be honest with you. It's not been like a concentrated effort. We just kind of like, you know, eh, eh, let's do this. And as of, I haven't looked at it, but my team's basically said, like, my team was very excited to, that I'm talking to you today because they said, please ask him why we aren't getting any traffic. So how long does it take? Like, Learn has been around forever. It's not like we're in the sandbox, I don't think. And now we're starting to add articles, but we're not really seeing much momentum. So, you know, is it something we're doing wrong? Or, hey, even with experienced websites, it can take months to see results. You know, I looked at it before we hopped on. Um, you know, so I, I suspected you would ask me about that. I can see the lack of traffic there. Uh, no, I mean, I, I looked in Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that <laughs> was, was uh, fighting entrepreneur. That was a sucker punch right to the face. One point goes to you, sir. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So tell me what, what uh, well, we're going to talk about during the on page, off page, what the hell am I doing wrong? But uh, yeah, how long? Your, your, your website's got a DR, a domain rating in HFS of 56, which is actually pretty damn good. And what a domain rating means, it's a third party metric. You know, uh, uh, Semrush has a domain authority, a HFS has a domain rating. It's basically you know, between zero and 100 how authoritative your website is. Yours is up there, you know? <laughs> but I mean, really, uh, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to take a deep dive over on the call right now. That would take a, a, about a month or so, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, really, you want to focus on um, keywords. I mean, a, a lot of people try to focus for the big keywords, you know, how to make money online or how to lose weight or how to get rid of acne, whatever. And the problem is those are so broad and so competitive, you're never going to rank for those, at least not uh, uh, on purpose. Uh, I'll give you one example, if I can hop off and learn for a second. One other thing I do is I like to focus on keywords like those to get traffic. Um, for my survival blog, for example, 
um, I like the, the phrase bug out bad. It's a survival of this backpack for getting away for three days. And I guess about 55,000 searches a month. I thought, okay, no way I'm going to rank for that. I'm going to go for a bug out bad list and bug out bad contents both get less volume. So I had a rank for those with some pretty solid contents. And I'm not really working on that side anymore as much. I, I actually hit page one for bug out bad, uh, which was giving me a uh, thousand hits per day for, for a few months, I think, if I recall correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's one thing I can use to funnel people into different funnels, different channels, et cetera. So, so with Learn, you know, don't focus so much on things like, you know, make money online, but try to find the niche topics of that. Uh, you know, if you go to Google, for example, and if you type in make money online in the top bar and hit space, you're going to see a different options come up, make money online with Amazon, with YouTube, with whatever. Those are, those are what people are searching for actively right now. Those are good topics, good ideas, what you can be blogging about. Or if you do have an Ahrefs account, which I do highly recommend, by the way, you can also plug that keyword into Ahrefs and you can see what other keywords people are searching for. Hey, real quick. Sorry, I missed that. What was that? What tool was that? I'm sorry. It's called Ahrefs. It's spelled A-H-R-E-F-S dot com. And so it's a paid tool. Uh, I think it's like 180 a month for the lowest plan. Don't quote me on that. I'm not certain, but it's a tool that I've been paying for for a while and absolutely love. Uh, I haven't even used the Google Keyword Planner in, since I've got Ahrefs. It's... Uh, yeah, a fantastic wow. tool with actually better data than Google. Let me just wow. let me just reconfirm real quick. A H R E F S dot com. You got it. Okay, brilliant. All right. There was one more thing you said. You said you checked Learn's domain <laughs> rating. Where did you yeah. do that? Uh, within Hrefs, there's actually you, you can go to site and I can't show you now, I don't think, but I mean let me pull it up real quick on my other screen here. If you go to site, if you go to Hrefs dot com slash site explorer, I simply type in the learn dot com and it actually gives me a ton of data about your site it gives me your url authority or your, your mm -hmm. url rating for that particular page your domain rating how many backlinks your website has how many websites are linking to you how many keywords you're ranking for it and estimate sure. on your organic traffic as well and the thing is you can also do this with your competitors as well to find out what they're ranking for and what they're doing right that you're not doing right so that's mm -hmm. yeah, we can go into that for hours and still not cover everything um, but that's it's one of my favorite tools for that reason. Okay. It's so much data in one place; it's well worth the money. It's awesome. We're, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk more about tools and things in, in a little bit. So I'm gonna save it for that. So obviously, I'm probably not doing things correct at Learn that are on page and off page. But I noticed that you immediately went to keywords. So it seemed like that was the first thing you saw. Was we're not really going after the right keywords. Is that a fair? evaluation of what you said i would say so yeah i mean okay. I, th I think i mean again in my opinion is probably you're probably trying to go for keywords that are too big and make money online how to make money online stuff like that uh you know there's there's i i would focus the first time even if you find a keyword getting a thousand hits a month the slower competition that's not a lot of traffic but with solid content i mean I, i've got articles myself that are ranking for two thousand keywords in one article if you make mm -hmm. a solid enough content piece that has the nice content flow, it looks nice, it reads nice, again, copywriting. I, I mean, I, I, there's people off topic, but there's people that can rank huge walls of text and it looks yeah. like crap. They're not gonna convert for, 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 for crap. I'm trying not to cuss okay. here. Um, so again, yes, when it comes in the CRO and the copy, you wanna have that content flow, the copywriting, the visual flow, you wanna make it look like it's worth reading as well. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid of smaller keywords, really don't be afraid of those keywords. Uh, I'm gonna have to very small keywords that ended up making me a lot of money. So. Hey, Jeff, where did you learn the term visual flow? Uh, I believe I learned that from you on it. All right. I just want to make <laughs> sure. That's my term. That's awesome. Man, we should just turn this into a copywriting podcast. All right. Um, so <laughs> before we get the next round will be keyword research. So I'm going to save some questions around that. But um, what are some of the important metrics? Because we're still talking metrics yeah. that um, – that you look for to see if your site has a good chance, like in Google Analytics, are you looking at time on site, number of pages, bounce rate, exit rate? Is there anything there that you pay attention to? Yeah, everything. I mean, analytics, I mean, when I take on a new client, for example, or look at my own sites, uh, you know, what a, a bounce rate, for example, is that if I search for make money online and I land on unlearn.com, for example, and I stay on the site for three to five minutes, I check it, I click on others, other pages on your site, I really like it that I finally leave. That tells Google email that I liked your site for the phrase make money online. So that's a valuable, your, your website's worth 
keep it up there. But if I click on learn.com and I see it and I leave within two or three seconds or even even 15 or 20 seconds without further exploring your website, that means you know it didn't it didn't satisfy what I was looking for and it wasn't really a quality website for that particular phrase. That's what's called a bounce rate. So you want to look at time on site. You want to look at bounce rate. You want to look at how many how many pages people click on, excuse me, when they land on your page for that site. Very 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 important things. Uh, I forget which website, but a third party tool uh, confirmed a couple of years ago that uh, click through rate and time on site is basically ridiculously ridiculously important. Um, so if you can improve that, I mean, you can take your existing traffic and monetize it even further. So wow. you know, time on site, balance rate, those are all very, very important. With agents. And it's funny because that, you know, 10 years ago, who cared? <laughs> Um, yeah. that wasn't a part of the ranking. And that's why I think you're saying that just, Hey, focus on writing really good content. Cause Google has gotten smart enough. Uh, one last question before we move into the next round, I forgot yeah. because you said something very interesting. You said, Hey, you'll be in the sandbox for one to three months on a new site. And then you have no expectations for three to six months. You said, you know, I just kind of let things be, what are you doing? Cause I want everyone to hear the dedication, the persistence and the discipline it takes to do SEO. During that time, what are you doing? Are you do you launch a website, just post a bunch of content, and then let it sit for a long time? Do you make it a goal that if you launch a new website, that you should be posting X amount of content regularly? Like, walk me through that those months. Uh, you know, I, I should clarify, it's not always going to be that case. That's what I expect. I mean, I've built new websites, excuse me, and ranks with, within a few weeks. Uh, that's it. kind of me being very aggressive with things. But I like to teach people to be a bit more cautious. So just plan on there being a sandbox. You know, don't. Basically, my point is, you know, don't freak out if you're not seeing results immediately, especially for new people. Um, if that makes any sense. But what I do, what I'll typically do though, is I, when I build a new site, I will probably add five to ten articles, just things people search for. I, I'll try to find things with decent search volume, just good quality content that I can simply add up there. Uh, I'll of course do my internal link and other on page stuff, which I'm sure we'll get into as well. I just gotta wait for a couple of weeks and I see if I'm getting any traffic yet or not. And I mean, um, yeah, it really, it really varies on what's going on with the site or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, for example, I, I just bought two expired domains, which I'm building my new websites on, for example. Uh, I just threw up my existing content. I'm just gonna wait for a few weeks to see what happens. Those are, those are brand new sites for me that I took over from other people that let them drop or expire. Okay. So, so um, you post <laughs> up a five, six good articles, leave it alone. So it's not like, you start to go to a daily or weekly publishing schedule. You wait a few weeks. If you get traffic, then what do you do? Do you start I, posting regularly? Yeah, I mean, not even if I get traffic. I mean, if I check my rankings, if I'm ranked on page five or six for something, you know, I'm ranked. It's not going to get me any traffic yet. But at that point, I'm going to start to further kind of do that. I mean, I've got some sites of mine that are just 10 pages and making money. So it, it really depends on what I want to do with it. Am I just going to make a very small niche site or am I going to build a brand? Uh, I mean, I've got some small niche sites that are 20 or 30 pages that I haven't added new content to for a while. I've got others I, I post content every single week to. So I mean, it really depends on what you want to do, honestly. Um, that, that's I interesting mean, uh, because a lot of people actually say that SEO, you have to be regularly updating your website, otherwise Google drops you off. Uh, very, very true. Absolutely. So, I mean, with with old with old content, for example, uh, there's been times when I took an article that was one year old, for example, and moved from the top to the bottom of page one. I did nothing except change the date, and I resubmitted the, the content to Google, and then moved back up. So, uh, it is very important to keep the content you want to rank fresh, uh, even if it's just the date alone. Um, but try to try to you know, update the content whenever you can though as well. Um, so I think that people don't like it because it's not sexy, but yeah, it is good to have fresh content. If you do find your rankings are dropping across the site, start adding some new blogs and new content, et cetera. Um, so I do try to post at least once or twice a week to my sites that do get decent traffic. Uh, okay. So it's not like you have 20 plus websites and you're posting 20 articles a day to 20 Correct. plus websites. It's you kind of go in and out, you watch them. Some, some you post regularly, your biggest money makers, you post regularly. The other ones, Correct. you kind of let them sit there, but when they start to fall off, you go in and, you know, update stuff and put some new content Correct. in. And again, with SEO, you're going to have a thousand different people give a thousand different methods. That's might, might not be the best way, but that's what works for me. And oh, that's amazing. Well. All right, man. Thank you so much. Listen, uh, what I want to do real quick is we're going to take a quick 
commercial break, talk to you about what's happening at Learn Nation and what all, right. all of the amazing things that are going on. And uh, we'll be right back with, we're only up to round number three. This is going to be crazy. All right. We're going to be back with round number three. All right. So round number three, keyword selection. How do I pick good keywords? Walk me through that. How do you pick good keywords? I think I kind of went into that a bit before. Uh, but, you know, I don't always focus on high search volume. I mean, to give you an example of um, keywords, um, if you're building a niche blog on how to get rid of acne, for example, uh, the phrase how to get rid of acne or, or even just get rid of acne or get rid of pimples, that's pretty vague. It's probably not going to convert it that well. It might. But if you, do, if you go for something like, you know, how do I get rid of white heads on my nose? That is ridiculously targeted, ridiculously... Um, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. That's going to convert a lot better because it's real targeted, uh, or, even, or even more for you know, like a learn type of keyword, how to make money online, or you know, how to build your email list. You want longer tail keywords that are, that are going to convert better. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, it's, it's hard to go into into this in such a quick, rapid fire format. Um, but so, I, I look for, I look for keywords that are relative. Uh, I try to I try to imagine you know what would people in that niche be searching for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Do you use any particular tools for keyword research? Uh, my favorite is Ahrefs again, like I mentioned before, A oh, okay. H R E F S dot com. Uh, I, I used to use the Google Keyword Planner, their AdWords tool. I haven't used that in a while. Ahrefs, believe it or not, has better data than Google. And I know that sounds strange, but they actually do for the search volume. So I use Ahrefs because you can simply type in a keyword and get a list of you know five thousand other related keywords. You can enter your competitor's website. You can get a list of all the key, every single keyword they're ranking for. You can get an estimate of their traffic as well. So it's a fantastic, fantastic tool for doing keyword research, for spying on your competitors, for seeing where, where you're ranking. So when I went to learn, for example, I saw I can see every single keyword you're ranking for, how much traffic it gets uh, in Google, and an estimate of how much traffic you would get for that. Of course, it's a third-party guesstimate. It's not always going to be totally accurate, but it's usually fairly decent. It gives you a pretty good idea. So. Uh, that's my favorite tool. Um, SEMrush, S-E-M-R-U-S-H is another amazing one. I don't like that one as much. It's an amazing tool though as well. Um, and even if, if you want to get some ideas for longer term content, you ever heard of a website called answerthepublic.com? No. It, it's, oh, it's, a, it's a keyword resource tool. It's basically, it kind of combines data from Google auto suggest, you know, like if you type in how to make money online space, it gives you different things people are searching for, that pulls that data into one location for you. <clears throat> so it's not going to be highest search volume for that stuff a lot of the time, but it's going to give you a lot of good blog topics and good questions you can blog about often. So I'll use Ahrefs usually. Uh, I'll look in the forums. I'll go to Quora.com, see what people are asking in there. Uh, I'll you know simply type in Google, see what people are searching for. I use Answer the Public. So it's not just one thing, one method. There's a lot of things you can do to get the best data. And then so, Ahrefs. Yeah, yeah, so in a in hrefs yeah. what is it like okay so i go in there let's just use an example i go in there and i type in internet marketing okay yeah. and it's going to come back with a whole bunch of keywords that are longer tail i know internet marketing sucks like i gotta go long tail that's i think seo people talk a lot about that if you're listening and you don't actually know what long tail means it's a keyword that has lots of words right so he said it earlier he was like how to get rid of my white heads on my nose like that's a very very now it's going to have a lot less search volume but yeah. it's also going to have a lot less competition and it's going to get you a lot higher targeted uh visitor so uh, what ideally, metrics not always but ideal yeah ideally so mm -hmm. i'm inside hrefs i type in internet marketing i get back a big list of keywords that they they say, do I filter by something? Are there certain <laughs> metrics, certain search volume, certain competition metrics I should look at? You know, I actually just did that search now. There's 18,000 suggestions. <laughs> um, internet marketing, believe it or not, is a bit vague. Yeah, I think of it's course. about 11,000 searches a month. I would search more for something more. The internet marketing could be anything. I would search for affiliate marketing. So, okay, so let's do that. Let's go, let's type in affiliate marketing and see, you know, how I want to walk through the how you would mentally <clears throat> literally filter down to get to your keyword okay affiliate marketing gets seventy-seven thousand searches a month um i've got twenty-two thousand different keyword suggestions here such as what is affiliate marketing amazon affiliate amazon affiliate marketing there you are um affiliate marketing programs let's do all twenty-three thousand here so what i'm going to do is with hrefs for example is you know I, I i don't care how much traffic i mean traffic is nice but i care more about longer tail stuff usually 
And uh, by the way, the whole long tail thing, we're not going to go into that. Some people think it means more words in the content. Other, others say it means, uh, I, I forget, but you're going to get people that disagree with what, what we said that day. But anyways, uh, so uh, word, word count volume. So search volume, I'm going to look for a maximum of only 5,000 searches a month. I want less competition. That takes me down to 17,000 keywords related to that. Uh, word count, SERP features, more filters. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Uh, words count. Let's go for let's go for longer term. How we explain? I'm going to go for four or more words. You can actually do that. So now I'm going to get keywords that have four or more words, and, and I'm going to go ahead and sort sort by volume. <clears throat> uh, it was affiliate marketing for beginners. How to start affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing programs for beginners. Affiliate marketing for dummies. That's probably copyrighted. Um, best affiliate marketing programs. So there's still a ton of keywords there. Uh, so the whole idea is don't always just try to go for that biggest, baddest keyword you want to rank for. It's probably not going to happen. I mean, I, mean, I, I would never go for an affiliate marketing. It's too damn competitive. Mm. Uh, I mean, but now you have, competitive. but you have thousands of keywords still. So <clears throat> yeah, how do exactly. you determine which of them? So you've got, you, you said the max search volume of 5,000, four or more keywords. So now yeah. what's next? Because I still have I mean, thousands again, of options. I mean, again, that's just what I did myself. You can take out the search volume. That's just... Again, you're going to get a thousand people that teach a thousand different methods. Yeah, that's just you trying to find more readily available stuff. So here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change. I'm going to make the minimum search volume 500. The maximum, I'm just going to up to 10,000 just for the fun of it. We'll see what we change to here, because you want you want stuff with search volume. Now that takes me to only 10 keywords, because I added a minimum of 500. So there we are. So I'm going to remove that maximum then completely, <clears throat> and just go for keywords with 500 or more with four four words. Uh, Hold on. Actually, I think I did a four words. I did four words maximum. My, my bad. Uh, four words. Four words minimum. Here we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So I only get about ten there. So that's pretty quick narrowed down right there. So you've got something called KD, which is keyword difficulty. The higher it is, the more difficult it's going to be in a rank. Uh, I found a, a few really good keywords here actually. Um, looking at low search volume. I mean, affiliate. Let's see here. Um, Affiliate marketing programs for beginners. That's what, five or six words there. That gets, uh, according to Ahrefs, 1.4 thousand, uh, about 1,400 searches per month, uh, which is not a lot, but that's something you can you can rank for a lot easier. Um, but again, that's a lot more specific. It's not just you know very sure. very broad phrase of that. What, what was a what did you say the keyword competitive? What was that KD? <clears throat> yeah, KD is keyword difficulty. It's basically between zero and 100. How difficult is it going to be to get to the top 10 or to page one in Google? What, for that? So let's say you're consulting me and you're helping me with my SEO and we got to give Learn's blog and SEO jumpstart. What K, what KD would you say we should look around? Uh, well, you know, what I would do is uh, the first thing I would do, which is a bit more advanced, but I, I would download every single keyword Learn is ranking for, uh, filter things that you're in the top five results for. I would download those keywords. Then I would re-upload those keywords into the Ahrefs keyword tool, and I would look at the average keyword difficulty of those keywords, if that makes sense. There's going to be an average range of those keywords. It might be 10, it might be 20, it might be 30. So that's kind of more of an advanced trip. But I want to see what you're ranking for right now. That's where we can start off. So it might be, it's probably going to be a bit lower if you're not ranking for a lot of stuff yet. So again, I, I would take every keyword you're ranking for right now. I would export that. I would filter that to keywords, uh, even just page one, for example. And I would export those keywords. Uh, I would then re-import those keywords back to the Ahrefs keyword tool. It's an extra step, and it works. And look at the average KD or keyword difficulty for those keywords. So yeah, I can see, okay, you're ranking. I'm not going to do it. It's going to take a few minutes to do it. Um, but that will kind of give me a better idea, uh, if that makes sense. Wow. Hey, uh, so I, ju <laughs> I just hit the mat. I just hit the mat. Yeah. Not quite a TKO yet, but you got close. Yeah, we we got we got someone counting right now. I got up a seven, all right. I got up a seven. Uh, that was that was that was pretty uh, mind blowing. All right, love that ninja <clears throat> strategy. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll ask one last question. I'm gonna move on. Uh, K D K is K D K D K D I. K D yeah, keyword difficulty yeah. Okay, K D. Good K D or what target K D are you looking at if it's a brand new website? <clears throat> um. It's a brand new site. I don't even care. I, I'm, I'm probably going to go for the lowest stuff because it's going to rank better, for example. Okay. Uh, I don't even really care. I, I just want to see if I'm going to get get my site indexed and then wait. I'm not going to okay. care. 
Uh, with a brand new site, you're not going to rank for difficult stuff, though. So, I mean, again, I, I, at that point, I would probably go for something lower. Um, affiliate marketing and programs for beginners has a KD of three, which means it's probably pretty not easy to rank. That might be something I start off with. And that's decent traffic, you know, 1,400 searches a month. If you rank number one for that, you can probably get 40% of that. So that's not a ton, but it's potential, and it's really high, high targeted. You can funnel those people into your know, funnels or lists or whatever. So uh, I would start off lower, not have high expectations, and increase as my website's authority grows. Amazing. All right. Um, I just have one final question because I have a whole round about tools, but okay. I'm kind of seeing a I'm kind of seeing a trend here. Is basically the only tool you recommend for SEO Ahrefs? Uh, for, for keyword research, uh, that's the main one I use. Again, there's other tools I use. Uh, that's cool. my main keyword research. We'll talk about them. those. We'll talk about those in the on page and off page. The only tool you recommend for SEO Ahrefs? Uh, for, for keyword research, uh, that's the main one I use. Again, there's other tools I use. Uh, that's cool. my main keyword research. We'll talk about them. those. We'll talk about those in the on page and off page then. Round number four, which is going to be on page SEO. What do you got to do in the content and on the page and on the website that uh, you publish that'll help your content get ranked higher? All right. All right. Rock and roll. I love, this, this is my kind of stuff here. I mean, the whole, the whole thing <laughs> is I love on page stuff. Uh, it's where I kick ass. Anyways, uh, your keyword, obviously. So I'm going to try to rank for very broad example, make money online. Of course, I'm not really going to try that. Um, but you want to have your keyword included in, in, a, in quite a few places. And for those listening, uh, you, know, you can always come back and listen or watch this later that you want to pay attention to. Is number one, you want to have your keyword in your domain. Now, I don't mean you know, make money online.com, but you would want something like learn.com slash blog slash make dash money dash online. So you want to have your, your keyword in your URL as your number one thing. That's going to be what you want to do first is telling Google this is what this article is about how to make money online. Uh, number two is you want to include your keyword in your title tag. I mean, your meta title you know, is going to be a, you know, from the SEO tool. You want to have your keyword towards the beginning of your title tag, make money online. Uh, now, here's the thing is you don't want to just add that keyword. You want to use that as your CTA or your call to action as well. So I would see what other people are using. And I would try to write something clever. Uh, it has to be within 55 characters with that keyword towards the beginning. So I might write something like how to make money online, comma, 10 proven methods or 10, my 10 best tricks or my 10 top ways. And you can even test that with other tools to see which works the best. But you want to try to get your keyword towards the beginning of that title tag. And again, use it as your CTA as well, your call to action as well. Um, next up, you want to include your keyword in your meta description. That's going to be when you search for a keyword, you see the title, the link for the website, then you see that content below, which is usually between 155 and 250 characters or so, uh, depending on what Google is showing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now, having the keyword there does not help you rank per se, but if you have the keyword there, it's going to make that keyword bold in the search results in that description, and it's going to draw more eyes to it. So it's going to help get more clicks to your site. So again, use that as a CTA, get people to drawn into your website. You want to get that click, you want to keep them happy and keep them on your site. So I might do something a bit longer, you know, how to make money online, comma, my 10 best proven methods for 2019, comma, perfect for beginners. You know, again, you want to add that copywriting element to it because you want to get that click. You don't just add the keyword and leave it. You're not going to, you're not going to get any clicks. Um, next up, you want to have your keyword in your H1 tag, your header tag. Now, for WordPress, most WordPress sites will automatically add your website's title, the, the page title, as your H1 tag. Most do that now, so you don't, don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, I'd say 99% of new WordPress teams do that. Uh, but don't add more than H1 tag. So good to only have the one, period. That's your main your main focus one. Although you do want to add your, your keyword into maybe a couple of H3 to H4 tags as well. And this is where it kind of gets a bit tricky. You want to see what your competitors are doing. Um, and here's how the, the, meta, the, the header tags help as well, is they kind of help with that nice visual flow. Again, credit the Anik on that term. Uh, it, the, the header tags break up your content. Um, they, they make it easier for I mean, Ideally, like with an email, you want people to be able to simply scan through with their mouse quickly and just glance at things to get an idea what the content's about. Those header tags are great for that. And it's okay to include your header tags with longer tail variations in those header tags as well. And I, I don't really have any examples off the top of my head, but if you go to jefflinney.com, you can look at any of my content pieces there, for example, you can see how I use those. <laughs> um, 
But again, you can also look at your competitors on page one, see what they're doing for that as well. Next up, I mentioned at the very beginning, your keyword density, 10 years ago, it was three to 5%. Keyword density still makes a difference depending on the niche and the keyword, but it's never something I focus on ever. Don't try to cram your keywords in there. I will include my main keyword in the first paragraph, the first 100 words in the content. I will include it naturally within the content, maybe one or two other times. But the thing is Google, you've already told Google what the article is about by adding it to your URL, your title, your description, your header tag, et cetera. So that's not what is necessary these days. So it's right naturally included a few times in there naturally, and that's typically going to be okay for when you're starting out. <clears throat> and then you can always optimize it later when you, based on what your competitors are doing. In fact, I'm going to get into an on-page tool in a bit that tells you what you should be doing for keyword density, if you got a moment for tools there. Um, but next up is you want to do internal linking. And I think I gave you a, a hint on this a couple of years ago. It helped you a lot with, with uh, onyxingall.com back in the day. But if you look at Wikipedia, if you look at the Wikipedia listing for Ford, for example, Ford Motors, and when Detroit's mentioned, it's going to link to Detroit on wikipedia.com. When Henry Ford is mentioned, it's going to link to him. When the city he was born in is mentioned, it's going to link to that city. Uh, internal linking is, is a great way to not only keep people on your site and keep them engaged and give them quality information, but it's also going to help pass on your authority SEO-wise to other pages on your site. So if I've got, for example, uh, an amazing bunch of backlinks coming to my article on how to make money online without investment, which I do, by the way, if I add internal links to other posts on my site from that article, this high authority, it's actually going to help pass that authority from, from that page to other pages on my site. So internal linking is ridiculous. That's how Wikipedia ranks for everything, by the way. It's going to be important for keeping people engaged on your site. It's going to be important for helping to build your authority. And it, yeah, it's going to do that for you as well. And then something else you want to do, and if I'm talking too fast, let me know here, but it's also good to add an external backlink to an authority in that industry. Here's the thing. If I'm, for example, writing about making money on Shopify, for example, I'm also going to maybe drop a uh, backlink to um, not Wikipedia per se, but maybe, maybe Shopify.com. The whole idea is Google wants to understand, in my opinion at least, that you, know, you don't care about keeping people on your site. You simply want to give them the best information. So most SEOs will tell you, myself included, <laughs> to get at least one or two external links to authority websites in that industry or niche. Uh, on your page and always make those open up in a new tab. You want to you never want to give up that click and have them leave your site. Always have external links open up in a new tab. So that's hey, going to tell Google, hey, Google, let's, I, I simply care about giving people the best information, even if they're visiting another website to get something. And you have, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Can that external backlink be an affiliate link or should it be a raw link? Yeah, I, I don't know. I do a mixture of both. It can be. Yes, I think that's okay. Uh, I, I know with Amazon sites, for example, some people would say just, yeah, as, as I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a definite answer. Sure. Uh, I'll do a mixture of both so to be sure. Wow. Amazing. I don't, I don't know. You, that. Uh, you've, you know, I'm, I'm writing these down, Jeff. So it's like nine <laughs> on page techniques already. And you are not talking too fast, my man. Keep going. I've got more, by the way. I can go yeah, on. Keep going. Um, Next up is, is, is you want to add an image, at least one image to your blog post. Uh, so again, the image should be your, named according to your keyword. So when you download or save the image, or, I mean, don't never steal images from other websites. When you create your own image or, or buy one, you want to name it according to your keyword. So make-money-online.jpg, for example. I'm going to add the image into my site. And with WordPress, it's really easy to add some more information to that image. Google is getting better at reading images but it can't really. So you want to add what's called an alt tag. It's going to be text that only Google can read or see that kind of says what this image is. So for example, it says a yellow school bus. You know, so Google knows that's what that picture is. So in that example, I would write, you know, make money online as my alt tag as well, if that makes sense. Um, so I mean, that's kind of the, the, the very variable basics you should be doing, probably nine or 10 good things there. Um, and if I can kind of go into a, a tiny bit more of what I do with a new post is I, I am huge in the CRO, conversion rate optimization, <clears throat> because you can take your existing traffic and you can double or triple your sales. You can double or triple your, your conversion rates easily if you know what you're doing. Um, and again, I, again I, I, love, I love using your phrase, visual flow. Thank you again for that. But, but if you look at any of my stuff, if you look at Neil Patel stuff, for example, and you're going to see that I, I will have an image or a video or a GIF every 300 words. Uh, I'm going to space out my content with bullet point lists, numbered lists, the header tags, um, 
you don't you don't, you don't want a big wall of text. People are gonna get bored and leave quickly. You wanna have engaging content that looks like it's worth paying attention to. But SEO, CRO is something a lot of people overlook. Uh, I've had people that outranked me before uh, for, for keywords and they couldn't convert for anything because their content was crap, it wasn't written well, and it just had a very boring look and appeal. It didn't look like it was worth paying attention to. So that's something I will put time into as well. Uh, and then of course, content length. Content length is an important thing people don't always talk about. Uh, I would say aim for 1,000 words minimum. Uh, I try to go for between 1,000 and 1,500 words for, for a regular type post. If you want to do a mega big massive post, that's fine too. Uh, I don't go above 3,000 words myself usually because I, I typically get, get bored with those, but that's just me. And you might find other people say other things, but I would aim for 1,000 to 1,500 words minimum uh, for most posts I know. Man. That was a mouthful. <laughs> I think I'm back on the floor. <laughs> Count, count it to eight this time, Jimmy. <coughs> count to eight. All right. Wow. Is that it? Uh, for the basic on page stuff, yeah. <laughs> All right. Basic. So. All right. Uh, look, that's a lot of stuff. I'll forget to do some of this. Do you use any tools to kind of confirm if you did it right? Are there any tools that come under the on-page side? Uh, I, I use a tool called – it's called Page Optimizer Pro. It, it's an on-page tool that actually uh, – it actually – Check this out. It's, it's pretty cool. Is I, I can take a look at a keyword I want to rank for on page one. I, I can look at my competitors that are ranking for that keyword, and I can enter those keywords into this tool. And I also add my website as well. The tool is going to look at everything those people are doing, and it's going to give me an average and a maximum of what I should be doing. So it's going to tell you, okay, Jeff, you need to add a thousand more words of content. You need to include your keyword one more time in your title tag. You need to remove your keyword from your description tag. You need to add your, your main keyword 13 more times into the content. Wow. You need to add 55 more long tail variations into the content. You does to, um does SEM Rush offer something like this? I swear I've heard this before. I don't know. I, I don't I don't think so, but I could be Page. wrong, so don't quote me on that. But I don't believe so. But that's uh I mean they will I don't I'm, I don't know. I don't I don't pay for that too. I'm I'm not sure. I don't believe so, though, but don't quote me on that. Um, but there's a, as far as you know, Pop is the main one that does that. There are some other dirt for SEO, Core, CRR. I, I love Core, by the way, but it's a lot more advanced. Um, but Pop is the main one that I use. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, amazing. SEM Rush, you can, you can see what other people are ranking for, and okay. you can find different keyword opportunities, but it's not going to really give you those. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess they'll give you a keyword I. It's just based on your sure. basic on page things you should be doing for that keyword. But as far as I know, it, it does not pull in your competitor's data like Pop does. Page Optimizer Pro is what it stands for. So, so, All right. So, so w one last question. I want to move into off-page SEO because that was awesome. Yeah. And thanks for giving us a great tool there too. Uh, off-page uh, Before we get to off-page SEO, you mentioned something earlier. You kind of breathed past it real quick. And that was that you submit your page to Google Talk to me about that. Like, so when I publish a website, do I have to actively go out there and tell Google, like, hey, can you please come check? Or act every article I post, do I have to do that? Is there a tool you use for that? Yes and no. You don't have to. I mean, when you build a new website, one thing you should be doing like, to stay in Google's grace is you should be adding that tool. I'm sorry, adding your website into Google Analytics and Google Search Console. That's going to give you valuable data. And you also want to add your site map to Google Search Console. So when you add your site map right away, that will tell Google, hey, my site is live indexed. But what you can also do, and I'm going to take off my sweater, getting warm here. Uh, what you can also do, though, is you can also, if, if you add a new URL that you want to see ranked quickly, you can go to Google's crawl tool. It's an on-page crawling tool. It will actually submit that keyword, uh, that URL to Google's index um, so it can be crawled and ranked a lot quicker. So if, if I build a new content piece right away, for example, and I want to see where it ranks right away, I can submit that to Google's index using a... Uh, the, the tool I'm using that up to fix it on the search console, I'm sorry. And it's going to be indexed within 30 seconds to a couple of hours. So what, do I just go to, do I just go to Google and type in Google search console to find yeah. this thing? Okay. But again, you do, you do need to have your website added uh, in the account, but yeah, you just go to Google search console. Uh, you want to create an account with your Gmail account and you want to add your website to both search console and Google analytics. Uh, I can't really go too much into that. There's a lot to it, but there's tutorials sure. online and on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so you can ping your blog. So when you add a new blog, you do not have to submit it via that tool for a new blog post. I mean, it's going to find it eventually on its own. The only reason you would do that is if you make a major, major change or if you just want to see where it ranks right away. 
typically when a website's indexed in Google, and again, don't quote me on this, but you're gonna have your entire sites crawled once every month at least at, at a minimum. Uh, Google does visit sites that publish content a lot more frequently and more often. So I mean, on uh, one of my sites, I, 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 I can post something and have it ranked immediately without even doing anything. Other sites, it might not be crawled for three or five days. So That's uh, crazy. But, uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to ping to Google every time you make a new post. So don't worry about that. You're still gonna be found. Just make sure you do have it in Search Console and Google Analytics as well. It's awesome. Hey, by the way, for all of you listening, if you wonder, you know, how much do we turn up the heat here in the fighting entrepreneur? Jeff had to take Jeff had to take his jacket off. It's getting it's starting to sweat a little. It's starting to sweat over there in the ring. All right, awesome. Man, thank you so much. That was that was absolutely impeccable. Let's move on to round number five. So, okay, so there we go. Off page SEO. Some people, Jeff, tell me this is dead. That in that incoming links and all that, they're like, dude, that's so 10 years ago. What's wrong with you? And you just gave such a brilliant knockdown of on page SEO. Uh, what do I, is there anything still relevant for off page? And by the way, anyone listening off page, can you ex- explain that for us actually? What is off page when people talk about uh, off page? Is basically, it's basically yeah, a good question. Like, it's basically a backlinks pointing back to your own website. Uh, you know, a lot of people think SEO is dead. I, I still get that. I, I was talking to Russell Brunson once briefly. He said, SEO still works. I was like, dude, heck yeah. Um, but yeah, it really does. <laughs> Off page is simply backlinks pointing back to your website. Uh, and yeah, they work ridiculously well. I mean, I mean, I'll give you an example of what I did. One of my clients, uh, who I'm not going to mention, is pretty well known in, in the financial industry, uh, has a main keyword that gets about, the main keyword they want to rank for gets about a quarter million hits per month. When I first started out working on their site, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I think they were on page four, and they were using other SEO companies for uh, people for the past ten years or so. <clears throat> and, and there was so many different changes of what was done. It was they had three or four different pages bouncing between a ranking on page four. Basically, Google did not know what they wanted to rank for. So I cleaned up the on-page SEO. I uh, used actually a lot of internal linking. I actually used a tool which we'll get into, I'm sure, called Screaming Frog, which is a hardcore analysis tool. And I was able to see you know, how many internal links they have pointing for this particular keyword to different blogs. And they were linked, when you want to rank for one big keyword, for example, uh, you want to make sure you link only to that one article with that keyword. They were linking to about 25 or so different blog posts on their site for that keyword. So they were telling Google, I don't know what, what I want to rank for this keyword. So I cleaned that up. <clears throat> And over about a four month period, I took them from the bottom of page four to the very, very, very top of page two. This is ridiculously competitive. So this, at that point, there was nothing more I can do. Everything on page was, I have to say, pretty damn impressive. I blew myself away with what I did with that. <clears throat> and traffic was already improving. <clears throat> so what I did next was, and here's the thing, people are gonna kind of like cringe and eh, at this, uh, backlinks. Uh, in many, many niches, there is no such thing as a free backlink. You're going to do outreach. You're going to reach out to bloggers, ask, hey, I've got this awesome content piece. If you were linked to this, that make my day. Sure, be happy to do that, Jeff. 35 bucks, 50 bucks, 150 bucks. And many niches, <clears throat> including this one, you know, you're not going to get a thing. You're not going to get a free backlink unless someone just kind of drops when they're talking about that particular niche. Um, so I actually, we spent about, um, we spent a few thousand dollars uh, acquiring some backlinks for real bloggers that we found we're already linking to our competitors. And again, that goes into Ahrefs. With Ahrefs, you can do a deep hardcore analysis, you know, find out who is linking to who for what keyword. So we contacted these people and we were able to, uh, I won't say we, I, I will or not, yeah, we were able to acquire backlinks from many of these different sites, uh, I'll say that. And uh, rankings jumped up after the first week to the bottom of page one about a month ago which made me ridiculously freaking happy to climb as well. As of this week, they're number four in Google, even, even above Wikipedia for that main keyword. Wow. And that keyword, that is what this person is all about. That is their brand, that is their main keyword. Traffic has gone up the past month for that keyword, for that URL by 25%. Uh, and, and this is a site, this is a, paid, a website that gets, um, I'll just say a very high mid six figure traffic per month. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. So, uh, off-page optimization backlinks is, is something that's really worth doing. Um, you're going you're, you're gonna to find it. Don't worry. If you're new, you don't have to spend thousands on backlinks. You really don't. You can build them yourself. And you can go. Um, and there's so many things. This is the white hat, which, which I do with my clients. 
With my own sites, I use what's called PBNs or private blog networks. It's going to be expired domains that were purchased and had a lot of authority that were converted into blogs in that particular game. So I might, for example, spend uh, 700 bucks on, on 10 or 20 different backlinks to my site, not, not that day. But so again, backlinks is not something we can cover in five or 10 minutes, but, but they certainly do work. Yeah. So you want to keep things, excuse me, natural looking. You're not always going to just build backlinks with that exact anchor text. So as an example, I'm just gonna, if I was going to be building backlinks to that, to that article for make money online without investing, if I was going to do 10 backlinks, I would probably do <clears throat> my first anchor text, make money online. My second one, maybe make money online without investment. My third one would be click here. So you, you get the idea. You want, to, you want to make it look natural, like people would naturally be linking to your website. It's going to be a lot less red flags there. And that's what, that's what works. Um, is that making sense? Makes total sense. I feel like <clears throat> I should take a shot of tequila every time you say jefflenny.com. What do you guys think? That would be awesome. <laughs> no, man, I love it. Uh, I, you know, PBNs, you said that, I was like, oh, crap, because there's so much there's so much buzz about PBN. Some people hate yeah. them. Some people love them. Uh, no, but, okay. I mean, if, if I can give a quick disclaimer, don't buy those from anybody unless you know what you're doing. There's, there's crappy ones out there that are going to work very short from it and tank your sound. Over. So yeah. when I say PBNs, don't just buy I got one for five bucks for, for a thousand links. Do not, do not buy links from Fiverr. Do not buy links. You know, Five bucks for a thousand links. I promise, not worth your time. It's gonna hurt more than help. So uh, to uh, me, it sounds like you are still very heavily focused on on page, because if someone is just starting, you kind of want them to focus on the on page, because it sounds yeah. to me like backlinks, and doing backlinks requires a little bit of that extra ninja finesse, and you know, it's maybe not for the, for the for the noob, to try to do. Absolutely, okay. and, and you certainly can rank without having excuse me, uh, any backlinks. I mean, with, what, one of the new sites I'm building, for example, is, is I, I simply looked at, if you go to Google, when you search for something, it's going to show you an accordion with four or five questions people ask. I simply had my content writer write about four of those questions. And I'm already on page two for one of them a week later with that new site. So uh, again, don't, yeah, on page certainly does work. It's going to be a great start. We start getting a little bit of traffic coming in. Uh, you also want to focus on the CRO. You want to focus on keeping people happy and engaged yeah. on your website. Backlinks come later, but they, they, you certainly can rank without doing backlinks. But when you start to, when you start to want more competitive uh, keywords to rank, backlinks are going to be uh, usually a pretty big thing. Love it. Love it. All right. Awesome. Let's move into the next round. Uh, we're having great pace here. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. I got to go back. You said, uh, you said a tool, streaming something. A screaming frog. Screaming Frog. Man, where do these people come up with these names? No Scre idea. <laughs> screaming Frog. All I'm right, Screaming like Frog. Monsters, what was it? What is it that Screaming Frog does? It analyzes your in internal linking? And screaming Frog analyzes your entire website. You can put your website there. It's going to look at everything on your site. It looks at you know your title tag, your description, your meta tag, how many words you have, your internal links, your external is it, links. Is it kind of like... Is it kind of like Page Optimizer Pro, or you got to use both? Well, no, Screaming Frog is different. It's completely, it doesn't tell you what to do. It just tells you what you're doing and what's broken. Okay. It tells, broke, so it, it's, it's another paid tool that I do use, I, I do pay for. I don't quote me on it, but I think it's about 150 bucks US per year. It's, it's, okay. it's, a, it's, a, British, it's a UK based tool, so about 139 pounds, I don't know, but it's like a buck 50 per year in the US. Uh, it's worth, worth, worth it. Uh, definitely. You, can, you can get a very, very high level overview of everything on that website. Any other right. tools for external linking off page SEO? Any tools that you recommend? No, uh, not really for, for, for off page for backlinking. No, stay, if, if you're new, stay away from the tool. You're going to find backlinking tools that will build, you know, 5,000 backlinks over a couple of days. And, and those have their place. They really do. But wait till you know what you're doing first. Stay, if you're new, stay away from those. Those are probably, I mean, while you might get results with them, if you're not careful, you might just end up tanking your website and give me a penalizing Google. Mm. So, yes, there All are, right. but nothing I'm going to go into. All <laughs> right, let's move into the next round. Okay, round number six. Google algorithm updates. Ooh, yeah, it just got colder in here. Yeah, it just got colder. How much do you pay attention to these? God, Panda. What are, what are some of the names? Panda... 
And Panda, Penguin, I mean, there's tons of them. There was the health update a couple weeks hey, ago. Hey, do uh, they uh, name these or do people name them? Like, does Google come out and say, hey, we just released an update called Panda? You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I'm not sure. I think yeah. they're done by Google, but I actually don't pay attention too much to those. And that's going to make many people cringe. But the reason I don't is because they've never been a problem for me. I, I always focus on quality content and quality backlinks. Those have never given me a problem. The only time they did was when Panda came out, and I think it was back in 2011, maybe 2012. Don't quote me. And that was back in that time period. Uh, I was working for, and I was I was working for an SEO agency, and we were doing content like I mentioned, three to five percent anchor text. We were doing crappy crappy backlinks. We paid for it for three or four bucks a pop uh, by by a virtual assistant from Asia, um, and we had most of our clients tank because of Panda because we were doing that. So. We were able to dive in and recover from that by fixing a lot of the stuff. But yeah, um, updates have never been something I've paid much attention to. And I mean, I, I do get a general idea what they're about, but they've never been a problem for me because I do things the right way the first time for myself and for my clients. That's never been a problem. But Love it. I mean, typically, how you, how you can avoid those though is don't buy crappy backlinks. If you're caught buying crappy backlinks, uh, it's going to hurt you. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> uh, you know, what. So what I love about what you said is just focus on the good content. And if you focus on good, even if Google does updates, you'll pretty much survive it. Let's say you do that and all of a sudden there is an update and you didn't survive it. Things kind of got bad for you. Uh, where do you go? Is there a trusted website or some site that you kind of read for updated information so that you know how to fix your site when the update happens? Yeah, I, I mean, typically you can simply do a Google search for the update name. You're going to find things like Moz.com, probably other other SEO websites talking about that stuff, but, uh, Majestic, blah, uh, Moz, Ahrefs.com, for example, uh, Majestic. There, there's a bunch of them. That talk Is it Majestic.com? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Uh, but there, there's going to be a bunch of them talking. You'll, you'll be able to find out what the problem is. Okay, this was focusing on on poor quality backlinks in the health industry. Sure. Uh, this is focusing on bad on-page optimization. This is focusing on. So you'll you'll know what it's about uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I, I will focus on fixing that. So if I did have one of my sites hit, for example, the first thing I would do is clean up my site. I would look for any broken links on the site, and you can find those with Screaming Frog, by the way. And I would fix those. Uh, I would look for any over-optimized content with crappy um, keyword density. And there's free tools you can find online that will take the keyword density, fix that. Uh, then I will look at my backlink profile. Um, Ahrefs is great for backlinks, but the best one for backlinks, again, in my opinion, is actually Majestic. And there's a paid tool at majestic.com that will tell you, you can look at your backlinks from there and you can kind of get a, a brief analysis of those, how spammy they are, how they look, how good they are, how bad they are. So if I find that I've got about, you know, if I've got 5,000 real crappy backlinks pointing, my, pointing to my site, it's, it, I, I didn't build those, possible someone pointed those to my site. You can do what's called a Google disavow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what you do is that you simply go to, well, I'm not going to go into detail now, but you can simply download your backlinks uh, profile from Majestic and from Google's, um, Google, um, Google's tool as well. And you can create a disavow file. It's basically backlinks that you do not want Google to credit or to, to look at. Now, Google, believe it or not, negative SEO has gotten harder these days. For the most part, they will not penalize an entire site because of backlinks but only one URL, which is, which is why SEO has gotten easier, in my opinion. They're smarter about it. But if you do have some bad backlinks, if you're penalizing you, you can submit those in what's called a disavow file. You can tell Google, listen, I tried to clean this up. I tried contacting these people. They wouldn't take them down. I tried removing these ones myself. Uh, and Google will analyze those manually. Uh, within a few weeks, usually, and give you a yay or nay. So here's the thing. If you're not penalized, if you find some bad backlinks coming in, please do not do, do a disavow. I and many others have had good luck simply not doing a disavow. And only save it for if you have a penalty. And when I say when you have a penalty, if you're getting 20,000 hits a day and that suddenly drops to 200 hits a day, you got a problem. If your traffic is simply on maybe a slow downward decline, it's probably not as big of an issue. You just want to fix the on-page other stuff like that. So again, that, that's something you would probably want to contact me directly about. It's something that's kind of hard to teach over, over one or two hour um, interview. But, uh, sure. So let me ask this, uh, a couple of random questions. One is some people have said before that if you post Google AdSense on 
your website that it helps you rank higher because Google's greedy and they basically say, oh, if I send more traffic, they'll, they'll, I'll get more, we get more ads click. Have you noticed that? Does that help? I think what they're actually saying is if you run PPC with Google AdWords, because you're paying for traffic to that keyword, they're going to rank you better. Uh, no, I, no. I, they, they, what they mean is if your landing page has AdSense on it, okay. ads from Google. Not, not that I know. Man. No, that, have, okay, great. Not, because I can have a real scammy, crappy blog with crap content and add ads on there. Google, as far as I know, no. Okay. And then what about um, when it comes to the algorithm, what about the impact of social media? So do you put like Facebook share, uh, all those Twitter shares and all that? Do you think Google's reading any of that to help your rankings? It doesn't help rankings. Uh, no. Many people will say it does. Uh, I'm in a private uh, SEO mastermind of a Dory friend, you know Dory, uh, called SIA, Search Intelligence Agency. And they actually test things on a scientific level, believe it or not. And that's one thing they found did not impact rankings at all. So here's the thing, I do add those social tools because it's gonna be social proof. This article got 3,500 Facebook shares. Crap, that's awesome. I'm gonna read it more and check it out. I'm gonna share it too. And plus that can also get traffic back to your site. So I would say it has a secondary positive effect of traffic and social proof of, of awesome content, but directly that's not gonna help improve, improve your, uh, your rankings. And yeah, you're gonna find many people that say, oh, Jeff, you're an idiot, you got that wrong. It does. Uh, but again, in my opinion and, and my testing and, and SEOs and making me look like a newbie, it's experience that doesn't make a difference. Love it. All right. <laughs> Well, listen, let's move right into the final round. This has been absolutely epic. Loved this interview. Uh, thank you so much for all the massive golden nuggets you've been dropping, man. All right, round number seven. What I want to talk to you about is a lot of people out there go to hire agencies or they'll hire SEO experts. It seems to be one of the markets uh where you hear the most about people getting burned you know it's just like it's it, i've been burned i've been burned for a lot and i really wish i could just name the person right now because he's still out there selling his nonsense but um he swears <laughs> it was not him it was me bullcrap anyways dude what do i look for like if i'm looking to hire someone other than jeff lenny if someone's like you know they're talking to an agency or they're talking to someone who's going to run their seo what are some of the pitfalls that they should be looking out for uh, I would, you know, and that's a very good question, by the way, a very, very good question. In fact, my, my uh, one client now, before I started with it, has been burned many times. My uh, client I had that I mentioned before, that I made a lot of money on their launch. I did their SEO briefly. They were burned as well. I, 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 like, I would suggest finding out who that person or agency has worked for. Do they have any testimonials, any case studies? Who, what, can you show me a keyword you improved? Can you show me a case study of that keyword? Because you're going to find a lot of SEO newbies trying to tank on clients. All I do for 500 a month, sure. That sounds awesome. I'll pay you that. It's awesome. And they're just going to use, you know, silly methods that don't work like directory submissions. In fact, I, I still see a lot of turn and burn SEO companies that make millions where they'll oh, we'll do 500 directory submissions. We'll do uh, a, bunch, a bunch of press releases. We'll do um, 35 blog submissions. And they, they just do, you, you want to get case studies of, of what they've done, who they've worked for, uh, which is huge. I, I mean, with, with my clients now, uh, I've actually got a real good, um, I'm sort of looking for a really good reputation now in the financial nations with, with eight figure, nine figure per year companies that know about me because of what I've done and who I've worked for. So reputation for me is everything. Uh, and, and you're going to find if you're talking with someone who knows what they're doing, they're going to have people they've worked for. They're going to have either case studies or testimonials. So, yeah, give them a call. Here's this person here. I took their traffic from 5,000 to 50,000 per month over a year and a half period. They'll be happy to talk to you. Um, ask so what they've let me ask this. So basically, let's say I'm talking to someone who's selling themselves as an SEO expert to me. Yeah. And I and I say, well, what are you going to do? And if they turn around and say, well, we're going to do 500 director submissions. Is that like a warning flag right there? I should be like, okay, I'm out. Yeah. I mean, I mean again, that's what I did with my agency when I was there back in 2010. Not mind the one I worked for, though. And I mean, that works back then. But yeah, you want to be careful with it because that's something that anybody can automate with software now. Um so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to look for. That's one of them. They ask what they do specifically. If they are not open about the methods they're doing, about what they're doing, that's a red flag. I say, oh, we're just going to do some links and some on-page stuff. Can you be more specific? How do you build the backlinks? Ask you know, what they're doing and how they accomplish it as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, so and in order to ask good questions, you've got to be informed, which is why you listen to The Fighting Entrepreneur and why you have Jeff Lenny here. Um, listen, as we wrap up here, Jeff, I am 190% positive that all of our listeners right now are going to want a little bit more Jeff Lenny in their life. So uh -huh. tell us, how can they follow you, stalk you, learn about you, show up at your house, call your phone, whatever it is they can do? Give us the information. How can people reach you and learn more from you? Uh, let, let me give them your address and cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my Learn Center uh, yeah. address is published everywhere. Uh, go ahead. Come on over. Like I said, if you go to jefflenny.com, for example, that's my blog. Can you uh, spell I, that for us so that everyone has it on the record? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Jeff Lenny, J E F F L E N N E Y dot com. Uh, I don't really post anything revolutionary. I, I, I am more of a doer than a, than a teacher myself, uh, despite what you might think by how I'm doing on this. Uh, training here. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, jefflenny.com. You can uh, sign up for my email list. I share awesome things that I come across them as well. Uh, you can just Google my name. You'll find me um, in Google, top of the page, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have anything to sell right now. I'm just here to teach you guys because I, I enjoy teaching. I did webinars with Anik as his coach for years. I kind of miss doing those. I, I enjoy teaching people what I do and what actually works. I'm a huge, huge um, believer and you know, you know, do what I do not do not do what I say. Do what I do because I actually do it, and because it actually works. Everything I'm sharing with you is stuff that I've tested, stuff that I do myself. So uh, if you guys want to follow me, JeffLenny.com. If you want to contact me about talking to me and looking at SEO for your site, I will say I am not cheap. Um, I'm not cheap at all, and I'm fairly expensive. Um, but I'm pretty damn good at what I do. I will tell you that. Hopefully, um, what I've said here gives you an idea that I, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. And I'm yeah, um, jefflenny.com. Uh, use the contact bar at the very top. Or you can also just email me directly at jeff at jefflenny.com as well. That'll come to me as well. That's jefflenny.com, everybody. All right. <laughs> Love it. Um, man, so powerful. <laughs> I could tell you he is not cheap. Um, and I know you're probably thinking right now and you want me to ask like, so what's not cheap? Like how expensive are you? The thing is guys, it's different for every single person. I can only tell you that in the world of SEO, it just depends on what you want and what you need. So I'm not going to even bother asking that. Uh, Mr. Jeff, you are now, um, man, that was an epic episode. Thank you. I, I'm okay. fairly speechless. I actually forgot how I'm supposed to end at the episode. So uh, well, let me just. Uh, I, I can keep going. I, can. Uh, <laughs> I think we're good for now, man. I think I'm, I'm lying on the floor. I'm kind of a little tired right now. All right. Here's the deal. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Look below. Leave a comment. Give Jeff some love. Give him some feedback. Tell him how much you love this episode. Click the mm -hmm. thumbs up. Click subscribe. Click the bell. Take the copy. Copy paste the URL. Send it to everybody. Okay. Paste it. Send it to your mom. We've got to get everybody to watch this. you got to learn SEO. If you're listening to this on iTunes, please go to onicpodcast.com and make sure you click the subscribe button and make sure you leave us a review. Even if you're on Spotify or Google podcast or any of the other gajillion places, do whatever you can to get this message out to other people. Last but not least, go to onicpodcast.com. That again is onicpodcast.com for the show notes today. Wow. Lots of stuff shared, right? But we're still not done because <laughs> Mr. Lenny, we got our closing rapid fire round. I'll be easy on you here because you were so awesome, awesome Appreciate to us. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Bring it on. All right. If you weren't doing internet marketing, what would you be doing? Uh, IT. Oh, okay. Coffee shop or home office? Home office. Apple yeah. or PC? Uh, PC. <laughs> All right. Okay. Absolutely favorite software. Your, your number one, you gave us a lot of software, but your number one must have tool for SEO. Probably Page Optimizer Pro, which I mentioned before, Pop. Page Optimizer Pro. Now, if you could go back 10 years from the day today and give the younger Jeff Lenny some advice, what would it be? Focus on one thing. Don't jump around so much. Uh, don't just try one thing for a week and quit because you're not getting results. That's, that was my, that's why it took me so long. I didn't really follow any one person's advice. I tried one thing very, very poorly for a few weeks and gave up and jumped around. Find one thing and stick with it, whether it's Facebook ads, Twitter, and Instagram, SEO, blogging, paid traffic, Facebook, whatever, it's, uh, Shopify stuff. Focus on one thing. Find a good mentor, at least a good proven course as well. Uh, you know, even if you can find, find a pre-done course online, a lot of stuff that Anna puts out. Inbox Blueprint is an amazing, amazing course that literally gives you step-by-step -step what to do. Uh, you know, find something that's proven to bring results. Stick with it. And if you don't get results right away, 
who cares? Don't give up. Stick with it. Um, you know, I, I have never seen a person fail that, that did not give up. I really have. Yeah, Everybody uh, that I talked to that's not got results is because they simply quit too quickly. They gave up before they kind of found what works for them. Wise words. Last question. The number one SEO trap people should stay away from. Number one SEO trap. Gee, that's a good question. I have no idea. I mean, uh, if, if you're looking to hire somebody. SEO mistake. Somebody, number one SEO mistake someone should stay away from. Buying crappy backlinks, I would say. I, 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 let me give you two. Let me give you two. Sure. Not, not focusing on proper on-page optimization and buying crappy backlinks back to your blog. It's, I can't awesome. just do one for that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Hey, Jeff, thank you so much. This has been an absolutely amazing episode. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart. We'll be in touch soon. I'm going to need a lot more of your help. And for all of you listening, you got to get over to jefflenny.com, get in touch with him, learn more from him. Listen to this episode again, get to onicpodcast.com, get those show notes. And uh, remember when life pushes you stand straight, smile and push it the heck back until next time fighting entrepreneurs. This is Onyx and all signing off. Thanks for listening to the fighting entrepreneur with your host Onyx and all. 